Hi, um, welcome to another of the B-Man videos. Today I'd just like to show you a little bit of the instrumental insemination uh, and what we do here. So one or two of the, the problems that we're having as beekeepers, uh, not just in the UK and Europe, but worldwide, um, it's becoming more and more of a problem in getting queens mated naturally and what we're finding is that many of the queens are getting superseded and what we mean by superseded is that the bees are saying this queen's no good and we need to replace her and also we're getting queens that are just turning into drone lace so they're not laying a fertile egg anymore they're just laying an unfertilized egg and producing another male bee What's becoming more and more popular now is instrumental insemination or artificial insemination. The good thing with uh, instrumental insemination is if the queen is still alive after 48 hours and running around vigorously, you know that she's going to be a well inseminated queen that's going to last two to three years, uh, maybe even slightly longer. Whereas naturally mated queens you don't quite know what's happened when they've gone on a mating flight have they been properly mated do they mate with multiple drones or just one or two uh, what was the quality of um, of the mating that they, they actually went through so these are some of the problems that instrumental intimidation can overcome and many beekeepers and bee breeders and queen ravers worldwide uh, turning to using instrumental insemination to ensure that their queens that they use for the cells or they may sell to other beekeepers are of the best quality. Um, we get people coming here from literally every continent on earth uh, to learn instrumental insemination and the more I speak to people from other countries the more I realise they're having exactly the same problem in their countries as we've been having here in the UK for a number of years now. So what we're going to do, I've already collected some semen today and we're just going to very quickly inseminate a queen to show you how fast this process actually is. What you've got to be very careful of when you're inseminating queens is you've got to be ultra clean uh, and very very sterile. The only area that's actually going to be sterile is the, where the queen's actually going to be sighted. Most of the problems arise with inseminating queens and, and they actually die within that first two day period of being inseminated is when you come into the semen from the drones it's contaminated. Uh, you need to have a very good regime when you're actually collecting semen from drones and every four or five drones clean your hands so we've got a high definition camera fit to the top of the microscope so you can actually see how quick and easy this process of actually inseminating a queen is uh, so you're going to get a microscope view of the queen while we're doing it After we've done this, the queen will be removed. Uh, she'll be putting the queen back. If she's running around vigorously in two days time, uh, we know she's good to go. Um, she's not been uh, contaminated in, in any way and she's not picked up any infections. After that two day period, we'll put her into a 
small nook, nook place that we'll make up, a six frame nook with 10 to 15,000 bees. Hopefully, fingers crossed, she gets accepted, which 99% uh, of the time that they do. And then we'll go back several days later and see if she's actually laying any eggs. After which point she'll be transferred uh, with those frames into a full size hive and she'll become a productive queen for the next two to three, four years. So just following on from what I was saying earlier about the problems we're having getting the, the queens mated, it's just another nail in the coffin uh, that's adding to the demise of a lot of beehives around the world. So we've got the Vuromite, which is prevalent in virtually every country uh, bar one or two tiny pockets around the world, Australia um, being one of them. In the UK, we've only got the island of Colonsy at the top of Scotland that's actually Vuro free. Last year in the UK, we've got the Asian Hornet was discovered down in Gloucester. Uh, we don't quite know exactly what's happening with the Asian Hornet. Another problem that could be potentially heading our way is the small hive beetle. Uh, that's over in Italy at the moment and we're just keeping our fingers crossed that they contain it in Italy and it doesn't start marching across uh, the rest of Europe and get into the UK. So these are all the problems that, that the bees are having and you've then got one of the other big problems which is climate change. Um, I've never been a great believer in global warming, but climate change, definitely. Everything's changing. Uh, the seasons are changing, we're getting colder and wetter summers. And that's the only time that the, the, the honeybees actually got to build up uh, to be a strong colony. So we can get a honey crop, or if we don't get a honey crop, at least it's going to be strong enough to go through winter and come out on the other side of winter in spring and be a successful colony again if you like these videos please click on the subscribe button below um, click on the little bell shape if you've got any comments or questions about instrumental insemination or beekeeping in general leave a comment down in the uh, the section below what we're going to be looking at further on in the year is we're going to be doing a lot more on the queen rearing uh, so now at least the weather came better we're going to be outside we're going to continue on with the clubboard method that we've been showing you. We did some inside the training room and next week, hopefully, touch wood, we're going to be outside and we're going to be doing it with the bees.